So without wasting much time, I will invite very Reverend Isaac Kofi, the counselor of UMAT School of Railway and Infrastructure Development to give us open prayer. Shall we pray? Gracious and beloved Father, we thank you for the opportunity of life and traveling mercies you have granted to your people to come before you this morning. We thank you for your mercies to have given us this opportunity to meet today as children trained by this great institution. We bless your name for the gift of knowledge, the gift of self-confidence that we have received from this university. We pray and thank you for that. We thank you for the opportunity to also contribute to your creation and to the world we live in because you have granted us opportunity to study, to be able to take part in the world peace and development of this world for the sustenance of humanity. We thank you for the fact that you've brought us together once again as children of this institution to come and take reflective memory of ourselves and what we can do to help humanity and what we can do to help this institution. We pray that even as we have come, you continue to shower your blessings over us and help us to understand everything that we are coming to do here so that at the end of the day, your name will be glorified. And when we are done and we are going back, we know for sure your grace will take us back home safely. This we ask and many others. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Thank you very much, very Reverend uh, Kofi. Again, this is the 11th annual Alumat Lecture. The 11th. And this is the first time it's being held here in Takrade. Uh, we hope that as we move forward, VC will give Aluma the chance to maybe interchange with the venues. That's at his discretion anyway. The annual Aluma lecture was instituted during the Diamond Jubilee celebration of the University of Mines and Technology. And I'm so happy the Foundation Vice Chancellor of UMAT is here with us. Prof. Mirekujima, he made sure that it was instituted. And you realize that he holds it in high esteem. That's how come he's here. Even though he's bereaving, but he's here to support us. Prof, thank you very much. We are grateful. Let's give him a hand of applause. <laughs> and we've continued since then up till now. And today, we have the 11th annual lecture. We normally invite an alumni to talk about a pressing issue that will be beneficial to the nation, to the world, and um, to industry, basically mining and its allied institutions. So today, we are having the 11th annual Alumat lecture here. As we move on, you understand why the alumni, the alumni is so proud to be at the UMAT School of Railway and Infrastructure Development. I'll now call on the school's registrar, the Straits Registrar, Madam Margaret Saki, to introduce the chairman for this occasion. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Please all protocol observe. It is my singular honor to introduce the chairman of this program this afternoon. He is Professor Richard Amankwa, the Vice Chancellor of the University of Mines and Technology. Professor Amankwa 
started his education from Pokuwari Senior Secondary School and Technology Secondary School in Kumasi. Went to Kwame Nkrumah University of Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology and obtained his PhD from Queen's University, Australia. He is a member of Ghana Institute of Engineers, member of Society for Mining, Metallurgical, Petroleum Engineers, and a fellow of West Africa Institute of Mining and Metallurgy. Technical support to operational and maintenance managers. His recent big thing was the acquisition of the bauxite concession in the Nyirehin in Pasasu area by engaging the Ghana Integrated Aluminium Development Corporation. <laughs> Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mr. AC. Thank you very much, uh, Prof. Uh, Mr. EC will be coming very soon. But uh, before that, we'll take some um, remarks and goodwill um, messages. Um, our key person to have given the goodwill message is also representing one of our uh, guests of honors. Now, he will come before um, the lecture. Let me remind you that this year's event is coming our way by the very kind courtesy of Angogo Dashanti Ejiapri Mine. Please, let's, let's give them a hand of applause, yes. They are the headline uh, sponsors. And this event is also being streamed on all the UMAT social media portals, as well as the university's website. We say a big thank you to Angogo Dashanti for supporting and helping this event. And Rockshaw was also not left out because Mr. EC is from Rockshaw, they are also giving us a helping hand. Let's clap for Rockshaw <laughs> International Limited in Accra. We also have Quantum LC. They are mining um, services and also uh, consultancy, they give consultancy services and sales of all equipment used in the mining sector. We say a big thank you to Quantum LC Company Limited. Then we also have Impa Marine, the house of oil and gas, PPEs and MROs. They are also supporting this program. We say a very big thank you to all of them for supporting us. We will now call on Professor Isaac Hayakubu, the dean. As VC said, he's the VC of School of Railways, to give us short remarks and good messages. But he's also a very, very active member of Alumat, Prof. Yakubu. Thank you very much, uh, Prof. Chair. I stand on existing protocols and I would like to thank everyone for coming here. Uh, it's a great opportunity to have uh, great people um, here. Um, the school, as mentioned by the Vice Chancellor, I started on a humble beginning from 2020-2021 with just uh, 342 students. And today, we are about 1,500. Next academic year, you, you see the school growing to 2,000 plus uh, population. And we are not missing the quality. We, we still teach our students on the principles of knowledge, truth, and excellence. And that is what is our guiding uh, principle. The students are taught critical thinking. They are taught to be creators, innovators, and above all, become entrepreneurs in, in the near uh, future as they graduate from this university. Um, there are some limiting 
uh, factors that may not allow the progress that we want to see. And one of them is infrastructure. We have to expand infrastructure. And here, we will need additional faculty block. Uh, we will need lab equipment. So Alumat, you can't support us uh, with laboratory equipment, mechanical, electrical, um, geomatics, geological, etc. Let's support computer science and engineering. Let's support the school to stand strong. Maybe uh, our friend, in fact, the school, UMAT, and the school here, the regional minister is our friend. Anytime you call him for a program, he's always uh, around. I uh, would like to thank you very much. I know one day we will immortalize uh, Honorable Ochiro Daku here. He will build a faculty block and we will name it after him. <laughs> Honorable, Honorable Ochiro Daku Faculty of Data Science and Technology. Can you see that? So um, maybe by next year we may see some footprints uh, getting there. Thank you very much and you are welcome. Thank you very much, Prof. Yakubu. Uh, I know it will happen because with the Alumat lecture, come up with uh, something very special. Indeed, the Alumat is very, very happy to be here. And we are also happy that this institution came to being from our fifth lecture. Let's see what the 11th lecture will bring. Shall we please sang, uh, stand as we sing? the university's song. Please, the words are at uh, page 29 of the brochure. Invite the representative of the Minister for Railway Development who was invited to be a guest of honor to give us his remarks. He is in the person of Dr. Michael 
Agnete, who is the managing director of the Ghana Railway Company Limited. Let's welcome Dr. Agnete. Thank you very much. Anytime I see my senior brother, the Western Regional Minister, then I'm happy because he always brings good tidings. Honorable, you are welcome. You know, the, the name um, Dr. Ochedaku is synonymous to railways. He knows all our bad stuff and our good stuff. So anytime I see him, I know I'm in trouble. Good evening. Honorable Minister, <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, the Vice Chancellor of the University of Mines and Technology, alumni of University of Mines and Technology, staff and students of UMAT and UMAT School of Railways and Infrastructure Development, our good friends from the media, invited guests, ladies and gentlemen. Before I continue, I would want you to know this speech was supposed to have been read by the Honorable Minister Honorable Minister for Railways Development in the person of um, Honorable John Peter Ameu. But he couldn't be here with us. He's attending to other important um, issues, so he asked me to stand in for him. If it goes well, he takes all the credit. But if it goes bad, please forgive me. So invited guests, ladies and gentlemen, I'm delighted and feel honored to be invited to participate in the 11th alumni lecture, which I understand is an annual event hosted by the Alumni Association of the University of Mines and Technology. <clears throat> Having been selected and invited as a special guest of honor on the occasion, on this occasion, I have also been requested to give a brief address on the way forward and importance of the School of Railways and Infrastructure Development. But before I do that, I would like to give a brief background of the establishment of the institution and how it has evolved over the years. Prior to Ghana's independence on 6th March 1957, the country had a railway network of approximately 947 kilometers designed on narrow gauge specifications and an axle load limit of 13 tons. The railway system at the time was managed by the then Ghana Railway and Ports Authority, which later became the Ghana Railway Corporation in, 19, in 1977, following the separation of the railway from the ports. In its quest to upgrade skills of officers to maintain the railway system across the country, the organization in the year 1980 came up with an idea to establish a training institute to be known as the Railway Central Training Institute, that's the RCTI. The construction of the Railway Central Training Institute commenced in second year 1984 with funding through a World Bank loan. The project was initially started by Marseille's Komazi Contractors Limited, but was later completed by the State Construction Corporation, SEC, and Fernaro Construction Limited with Architectural and Engineering Services Corporation, that's AESC, as a supervising consultant. The project was completed in 1990 with the following facilities in place. Administration block, dormitory blocks, dining hall and kitchen, warden's room, class blocks, classroom blocks, auditorium and welfare blocks. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, the objective of the Central Training Institute was to promote the efficiency and productivity in the organization, generate a well-trained and skilled workforce, and also to carry out training for skilled manpower up to first line management level in the various departments of the organization. The main areas of training included 
maintenance of locomotive wagons and coaches, maintenance of tracks, maintenance of signaling and telecommunication systems, and then traffic operations among others. Unfortunately, due to the lack of adequate investment into the maintenance and development of the railway system by successive governments, which has led to the collapse of the system, the Railway Central Training School also faced similar predicament and was left in a bad state. Ladies and gentlemen, government led by His Excellency President Nanado Damkwa Akufuado has placed significant emphasis on the development of railway infrastructure and services, recognizing that rail transport plays a crucial role in the transportation of bulk commodities and mass movement of people. Government in 2017 prioritized the development and expansion of the railway network. In order to develop capacity to maintain and sustain the railway system that have been planned and been implemented as part of the railway master plan, government in 2017 decided to rehabilitate the old railway training, central training institute here at Esikado, secondly, into a degree awarding institution to provide training and railway engineering and other ancillary programs. On the 15th of May, 2018, the ministry signed a memorandum of understanding with the University of Mines and Technology, UMAT, Takwa, to develop the railway training school into an accredited institution of higher learning for the award of certificates and diplomas. The MOU was preceded by the completion of the upgrade and modernization works at the training institute to enhance its capacity to meet the present technological demands for skills development. A new drainage system was also constructed as part of the works to prevent perennial flooding which used to occur in the area during the rainy season. The first batch of about 500 students commenced studies in 2021-2022 academic year and offered the following degree programs among other certificate courses. That is BSc Mechanical Engineering, Electrical and Electronic Engineering, BSc, BSc Computer Science and Engineering, BSc Geomatic Engineering, Geological Engineering, and BSc Environmental and Social Engineering. Ladies and gentlemen, UMAT School of Railways and Infrastructure Development has over the years collaborated with Masses IR Engineering Limited and GIZ to implement annual summer school and training programs in railway engineering since 2021. The program focuses on delivering quality and sustainable education for students through full-time intensive classes, on-site training, as well as extracurricular activities. The annual summer school program targets young students, young student engineers, to prepare them for employment in the railway industry in Ghana, to fill in the skill gaps between education and the railway industry needs, and also to support implementation of the railway master plan. At this juncture, I wish to encourage the members of the Alumni Association of the University of Mines and Technology to use your network and the community to connect with existing students of the School of Railways and Infrastructure Development through volunteer activities and support to help grow the brand and reputation of UMAT. Alumni engagement such as this annual lecture series should be encouraged as it nurtures relationship with previous students or alumni to create a professional network. Furthermore, inviting alumni to contribute to a course of study in this institution will go a long way to enrich the learning experiences for current students to fill specific expertise gaps, teaching, and diversify content. Introducing alumni guests content into courses can also be stimulating and provide authentic learning and the promotion of student engagement. I therefore want to take this opportunity to invite members of the Alumni Association to offer such support to the Human School 
of railways and infrastructure development, which has now become part of your alma mater under the existing partnership with the railway sector in Ghana. I thank you all for your attention and wish you a successful event. God bless us all. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Adnite. Uh, we are continuing with the uh, program. I guess it's time now for us to listen to the lecture for uh, this 11th annual alumni lecture. Already, Mr. Godfrey Adoisi has been introduced by the Vice Chancellor. So we'll just move on to listen to the lecture. Then after, we'll continue with whatever we have. We'll listen to the good news too from our special guest of honor, Honorable Rachel Vedista. So with a hand of applause, let's welcome Mr. Godfrey Adu AEC, who is going to speak on the topic, Overview of Ghana's Integrated Aluminium Industry. Good afternoon. Now, I believe that uh, I have been, you know, introduced by um, Mr. Chairman, and I noticed that the introduction was um, he attempted a very uh, tall order of experience. But then you have a short man standing before you, <laughs> you know, to uh, deliver this lecture. So once I'm short, I'll try and make it short. <laughs> Thank you uh, very much. Let me get my uh, slide on and then we will begin proceedings. I hope the IT will project uh, for me as well as I go through this. Great. So, now let's uh, start from here. Um, now, Mr. Chairman, the uh, Vice Chancellor of UMAT, Professor Richard uh, 
Kwesi Amankwa. Um, the Western Regional Minister, Honorable Kwabna Ochri Dakumensa. And then we have um, the, okay, so the Minister for Railway is uh, represented by Dr. Engineer uh, Michael Anyote. And then we have um, the Chief Executive Officer of GRDKI. I'm not sure whether he has joined us. I think that is uh, not with us yet. Now, Foundation uh, Vice Chancellor for UMAT, Professor Emeritus Daniel Merikujima. And then we have the Dean, uh, School of Railway and Infrastructure uh, Development, Associate Professor uh, Isaka Yakubu. The CEO for Rockshire, in fact, uh, wanted to be with us as well as the COO. So we have uh, Mr. Kwesi Oseyofori and then uh, Dr. Kwesi Enyan. Dr. Enyan uh, started late from Accra, so he's on his way. I hope that you will come and meet uh, this proceedings. Um, and then we have the CEO for Quantum, uh, Mr. Titus Glover, the president for Alumat, Dr. Stephen uh, Kofi Indedi, uh, who happens to be my mate at UMAT. <laughs> yes. uh, in fact, we're only three who did the, the PGD, uh, you know, very small number at that time. I believe that now you have so many people um, in a lecture room. Okay. Then current and future um, Alumat members, the mining industry professionals gathered here, academia, um, the media, the organizers of this um, alumni lecture, ladies and gentlemen. Men. Um, in fact, I must say that it is with great pleasure that I uh, stand before you here to deliver the 11th annual alumni lecture. I am, you know, so happy uh, to get the opportunity uh, to do this. Now, uh, Mr. Chairman, this topic that I am handling today has been carefully uh, selected. So the topic that we have, which is overview of Ghana's integrated aluminum industry, I say has been carefully uh, selected for the basic reason that um, we, we all know the state of affairs you know, of our nation when it comes to the economy. And this is something which is happening all over the world. And it is clear that we need something substantial to inject into this our economy. Though we've seen a recovery of the economy, I mean, it is, it is obvious that we need something substantial to inject into our economy. So this topic has been um, selected to open up, you know, what I think, and for that matter, the um, institution that I represent, what we think about the bauxite um, industry. Now, let me uh, start by giving a bit of you know, history of the bauxite. And indeed, when you look at the economy of Ghana, uh, when we look at the mining industry, we know that uh, it plays a major role. And that major role is controlled by gold. You know, gold controls 
the major role that um, mining plays in the economy of Ghana. Now, we have um, bauxite, but you would realize that uh, it's always been uh, gold and gold and gold. Now, this lecture would show that indeed we have so much to gain if we consider managing the bauxite industry um, very well. And that is what you know, I will dwell on. And let me uh, attempt to do a bit of a history of bauxite before I really come into the main issue. So when you look at bauxite, okay. so we look at uh, the uh, significance of mining to Ghana's economy. I've just mentioned that bauxite discovery in Ghana. So we're looking at a bit of history of bauxite, and then we would uh, look at bauxite, uh, Ghana's bauxite resource, resources and location. So by uh, way of history, we have um, uh, bauxite. You know, this was first uh, discovered by a French um, a chemist called P. Uh, Bertier in 1821. For a while, he was uh, investigating uh, rock specimens found in a small town called Le Beau in southern France. And we are told that um, the name, you know, bauxite came from that town, Le Beau. That is how we got uh, the name bauxite. But in Ghana, um, bauxite was, you know, discovered by one Sir Albert uh, Kitson, who is a, a British-Australian geologist. Yeah. You know, approval for bauxite, you know, then was given, uh, was granted by the uh, British in 1928. But detailed bauxite exploitation and mining was uh, started later in the 1940s at Awasu uh, in the western region of Ghana. So what, what is uh, bauxite at all? We're saying that bauxite is indeed um, the main source of oil that we use for um, aluminum, and bauxite is the most widely um, distributed or used for alumina uh, production. Um, Ghana has bauxite resource to a certain quantum. Um, so let's uh, look at the resource that we have, you know, in Ghana. So we are talking of bauxite resource of over 2 billion in Ghana. And I have mentioned the um, distribution over the uh, particular areas that we have uh, the bauxite. So you can see, we all know of Awasu, you know, bauxite. And uh, this data is telling us, you know, we have about a billion um, resource sitting in the Awasu area. The Inahini area, we're talking of 912 million uh, tons of bauxite. And then the Kibi Etiwa area, we have um, around 200, uh, certain, 200 million tons sitting there. Ejuyanima, 814, and this totals two, uh, 2.9 uh, billion tons of bauxite. We don't know much of uh, Ejuyanuma, so we can just focus on Awaso Yinehini, uh, then Kibi and Atewa, you know, for now. Now we see the aluminum oxide grade that we have in these areas by way of resource, and then we see the uh, uh, silica that we have there. You know, these sil silica levels are very comparable to what is required in the whole world. You know, so the bauxite we have in Ghana is very good quality. 
and we need to do something good with this uh, bauxite. Now, when you look at world bauxite reserves, this is the picture that we have. And you can see that in Africa, uh, Guinea is topping uh, this table. In fact, the whole world, Guinea has the largest bauxite reserves. We're talking of 24% um, of the total uh, for the world. And you can see Australia comes second you know, to Guinea. And the rest of the countries follow. Um, indeed, Ghana will be in the other countries, uh, which is, uh, uh, what, about 5 billion. Ghana would be captured uh, within that. So looking at the whole world, you can see that uh, what we have, you know, is substantial. We just need to see how to manage this and we can do something good with it as far as the economy uh, is concerned. Now this is uh, showing world bauxite production. So for uh, the world bauxite production, uh, you can see that Australia then comes top. Now this tells us that we have the resource but we are not tapping the resource in Africa. Guinea is doing quite well, but you look at Ghana, we just have small you know, levels of production at Awasu and that is all. And we sit here, we complaining of unemployment and all of that. We complaining about our economy but we have the resources. So you look at this chart, you see that uh, Guinea is even not mentioned. So it's like we have the resources, but producing it is a problem. And why is it a problem? We would come to look at the issue of our infrastructure. Move on. Now, what uh, I've captured here is just to show us uh, the world market prices of the uh, bauxite, you know, commodities. So, looking carefully at what we have here, bauxite is uh, the price of that on the world market, 45.93, and this figure is coming from uh, the YM Commodity Market Update. 11th October figure is what I have there, 45.93. Alumina is going for 336 per ton. And the aluminum is going for $2,159 per ton. Now, Interestingly, when you look at um, Awasu, you would realize that um, Awasu is not even realizing the world market price that we have there. Um, just move to the next slide. Um, okay, so now that brings us to why the integrated aluminum industry of Ghana is critical, crucial, and important. Now, having looked at uh, the prices that uh, we just saw, you know, we know that definitely something is got to be done um, to look at the other areas in other words, adding value to our bauxite. Okay. Now, so it is good news to uh, say at this point that 
um, the government of Ghana, you know, that is um, the MPP government that we have now, what uh, have they done about this? Indeed, there is a vision that the first president of this country had, um, Nkrumah, you know, about what to do with the bauxite in Ghana. But you realize that that dream of having um, Valku, you know, just died off of subsequent governments. Now we have um, a government that is refocusing on this. And I think it is good to um, uh, look into this and definitely uh, something good will come uh, out of that. So we have um, the government, you know, forming. In fact, the Ghana Integrated Aluminium Development Corporation, which is a GIADEC. And this was established by an act of parliament. That is the um, Ghana Integrated Aluminium Development Corporation Act 2018, Act 976. And this is to develop and promote um, a globally uh, what competitive integrated aluminum industry in Ghana. Now, this vision for me is very, very laudable. And so, what is GIADEC uh, doing uh, with this? Now, GIADEC has three projects, you know, four projects, rather, under the integrated aluminum um, industry. So the implementation, you know, of uh, Ghana's integrated aluminum industry, you know, is then premised on these four key uh, projects. And the project number one is the expansion of the Awaso, you know, the existing Awaso mine. Expansion of it and building a refinery, you know, to um, add value to the bauxite that we have been mining. Because all this while, all that we are doing is exporting bauxite at the price that we saw. Whilst alumina and aluminum are sold at higher prices. So we see that clearly the, uh, the issue of adding value to our bauxite is, is simply uh, long overdue. And that is why I would want to stress on some of the benefits that we uh, would accrue you know, by vigorously making sure that we pursue uh, this, this agenda you know, very well. Now, the uh, project number two is the development of a mine, you know, at Yenehini in Pasaso and a railway um, no, and a refinery solution. So, we have a project two, which will develop the bauxite at the Yenehini in Pasaso area and also look at a refinery solution for uh, that project. And then we have um, the uh, project number four, which is the development of um, a mine at Chebi, and uh, a second mine. So we have the Chebi uh, project. The project will pick uh, another block of the Yenahini, uh, you know, deposit as a project three. And there is a project four, which uh, focuses on the modernization and um, the expansion of the Valco uh, smelter, you know, that we have currently. So when we uh, go into mining, all these uh, deposits, you know, vigorously, clearly, for us to have an integrated industry, it means that we need to have um, uh, from mining to refinery to smelting, we need to have industries 
handling all these areas uh, very well. And when we have been able to achieve this, then you can imagine uh, the benefits uh, that we would be uh, realizing. And uh, for the implementation of this um, IAI, the Integrated Aluminum Industry, um, what the uh, government has done, you know, after uh, the act of uh, GIADEC, what they have done, you, you notice that initially this integrated industry, uh, aluminum industry idea was just with a working group in Mencom, and that has been transitioned into the GIADEC that we are talking about now. And this transitioning is now given as the opportunity, you know, to do all that we are doing at, at the moment. And for GIADEC uh, to be able to implement this IAI, we will look at uh, some of the things that they have gone through so far, you know, uh, in, in, in Ghana. And so we will look at the GIADEC investor rounds of engagement. The rounds of engagement. So what happened in this uh, rounds of engagement, GIADEC um, decided that the box site is for Ghanaians, and so we're looking at investors to partner with them so that we can develop the bauxite industry. So GIADEC actually advertised, you know, in the middle of uh, 2019, uh, specifically uh, Rockshire Company, we saw this advert on the 14th of May 2019, you know, asking for um, interested investors to, uh, to apply and go through these rounds of engagement. And once you are successful, then you will have the opportunity to partner GIADEC for the development of uh, the bauxite industry. So we uh, went through three rounds of engagement, and uh, the three rounds of engagement indeed um, involved, you know, initially um, just identifying, um, you know, the companies that are capable to move to the next step. We went through the second round of engagement, selected uh, companies, went through second round, and then uh, third round of engagement where we went through the BAFO, which is uh, 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 presenting the best offer. So we went through a, a rigorous process, and having gone through all that process, uh, I must say that Rockshire Company came out as the first Ghanaian company that uh, was allotted a block of the Yenahini uh, bauxite deposit. You know, Th thank you uh, for that. And this was by um, hard work. In fact, uh, some of my colleagues that we worked on this um, are with me here, and uh, we have Professor Emeritus Daniel Mnikul Jima himself is on that team. <laughs> and we have Dr. Kwesi Enyan also on, on, on the team. Myself, we have um, a geologist Isaac Mabi, and others work so hard, you know, to uh, get a concession in the Yenahini area. Now, so let us now look at, um, you know, after the selection, uh, what next? Indeed, the uh, IAI, the Integrated Aluminum Industry must benefit uh, Ghana. And what are the benefits, you know, that we are looking at? Okay. So, 
uh, as I said, you know, uh, from the beginning, all the bauxite that we are mining at Awasu at the moment is just being exported. And I know Awasu is probably getting a price um, around 38 to 40 dollars a ton at the moment. Now we saw the statistics uh, what aluminum, uh, even alumina first, would realize and what aluminum would also realize. But then all this while, Ghana is only benefiting from just exporting the bauxite ore, which is not injecting much into uh, our economy. You know, so it is clear that we need to move fast, you know, for this uh, int integration uh, to ensure that instead of other countries like China, Brazil, and Ukraine, who um, import uh, more of the bauxite and therefore benefit from the upstream of the bauxite, you know, we would add value and then internally also uh, benefit from the upstream of uh, the bauxite deposit that we have. We have already seen the resources that we have in this country. We simply have to add value to this. Uh, next. So <clears throat> let us do a bit of analysis again on the price and also look at this chart you know, below here. Now we have seen uh, the prices, uh, the commodity prices already, bauxite, alumina, and aluminum. Now the chart you see here is the prices that we realize in Ghana. So in Ghana, within uh, this period, uh, 20, I think the numbers here are not very eligible, but from 2018 to 2022, we were only realizing um, $31 per ton, which reduced to $29 per ton. That was what we were getting per ton of the bauxite that we export from Ghana, which is woefully inadequate. So even when you look at the world market prices, even selling the bauxite, when it is from Africa, you can imagine uh, what we get for it. Next. Okay. So the focus here is addition of value. We have to, you know, then make every effort to add value to the bauxite or to um, produce alumina through refinery and also. Um, al the alumina also by smelting we get aluminium and you would realize from the numbers that we saw that clearly we would realize much revenue by doing so so <clears throat> comparing the prices we saw um, the bauxite price 45.93, the uh, alumina price 336, and then the aluminum price, the 2001 as 5. You notice that when you compare, you know, how it appreciates by adding value, this is what we see that from bauxite to alumina, you're talking of 7.3 times higher or 730% is what you are getting in terms of price when you add value to your bauxite. And then when you come to alumina to uh, aluminum, you are adding, what, 6.7 times the price, which is uh, 640%. And therefore, when you compare from bauxite to alumina, then we're talking of 47 times, 4,700% of the bauxite or, you know, price. So why is we getting 
just something paltry for a sporting bauxite throughout this period. When we add value, we're talking of you know, getting 47 times the revenue that we are realizing at the moment. Next. Okay. Now to uh, buttress this point further, I just have uh, this chart you know, to uh, illustrate that the more. So this chart is showing, uh, where is my pointer? Okay. So this is showing uh, the aluminum uh, prices, and then we have uh, alumina prices. So the lighter line, which is this one, and that is the um, that is the aluminium prices with this the primary y-axis, and then the uh, alumina prices is the secondary y-axis, and that is uh, this thick line here. And when you look at it, just picking a point on this chart. You know, you can see that while your alumina price, you know, sits around uh, 350 thereabouts, you're getting the alumina, you know, price around 2,200. And that is the trend, you know, throughout. When you look at all over this period, that is the kind of trend that we are looking at. And the uh, next chart would also buttress this point further. Can we look at the next chart? Okay. Now, this chart is showing us alumina price as a percentage of aluminum price. And this is 2010 to 2022. That's a lot of data. And what this is showing us, we see that we are around the 15% you know, mark for most of this. So this is telling us that your aluminum price compared to alumina, alumina is 15% of the, uh, alumina, uh, the aluminum price. Now all these things I'm showing to uh, what our appetite that we simply have to add value and not just export the bauxite raw as we have been doing. Let's move to the next. So now, when we say add value, add value, what exactly then are we talking about? So I have a process flow here to explain more on the value addition that I am talking about. So this is telling us that um, when you take four tons of uh, bauxite ore, uh, four tons, and you refine that, you will get half of it as alumina. You know, so for this scenario, yes, that, that is it. The ratios vary based on the quality and, you know, of the bauxite that we have and other impurities. So for this, using uh, these as uh, our analysis, now, and then when you take the alumina uh, to aluminum, again, you have a similar you know, ratio, uh, two to one, is what you would uh, get. So basically, your uh, bauxite ore, when you refine it, you would uh, produce alumina. As you go upstream, and then you smelt, then you get the aluminum primary uh, products. And then downstream, you get your aluminum uh, ingots, and then all the aluminum products that we see. You know, the roofing sheets, the cars, the uh, aeroplane parts, and so many things that we get is just by going through uh, this process here. You know, and then you would be able to get your aluminum which sells much, much higher compared to what we're doing currently 
with just a sporting at the both sides all. Okay. Uh, let's move to the next. Okay. So, Jadek then needs to look at this downstream thing carefully. So, Jadek's vision for the downstream is actually um, anchored by what just the vacuum smelter. I mean, currently, we just have a smelter which is doing very little. And I must say that Vaco actually imports alumina. We have bauxite, but Vaco is importing alumina and they smelt. So we take our bauxite away and then our Vaco has to import, you see, to produce uh, just limited aluminum for us to use. I think that even what they produce, yes, we do have some go to Ghana market anyway. Now, so you see that when we go through this value chain properly and it is well managed, okay, now when we come to the issue of employment, yeah, we see that apart from gaining financially, we have seen the numbers the price appreciating as you add value. But also what happens to employment. I mean, clearly, when you look at, I think that Awaso currently has about 800, you know, total employees. So you can uh, imagine if we um, have a refinery and we have uh, a smelter, so you do the um, mining, you refine and smelt. You provide employment for all these uh, you know, um, establishments. So you have your refinery and then smelter, you have employment you know, for all of them. And then uh, we come here. In fact, the refinery alone provides other jobs apart from the plants that you put up. The final alone require a lot of caustic soda. This caustic soda comes from salt. Ghana, we already have quality salt that can be used for the caustic soda. And so that area alone can provide huge employment for this nation. So we can partly solve the issue of unemployment and also generate higher revenue you know, inject that into our economy. Okay, let's look at the next slide. So it is clear from what we see in with the benefits of the IAI that the Ghana government's idea of the IAI to indeed mine the bauxite or refine the bauxite into alumina, smelt the alumina into aluminum, and use the aluminum to produce downstream products will be very beneficial to the development of Ghana. So in a nutshell, what I have narrated, you know, this is how I want to couch everything that we have, you know, gone through so far. It is something that we have to pursue, you know, vigorously and realize it. But the question is, how do we do that? Now, let's move on to the next slide. So, it is clear that we can only realize this by having what? Infrastructure. Now, we saw earlier that when it comes to resources, Africa, we have it. Guinea is stopping resources. When it comes to production, we didn't even see Guinea on the list. Why? Infrastructure. That is the whole problem. And I think that that is why this institution where this, this lecture is being delivered is so important in the scheme of affairs when we talk of the integrated aluminum industry. Infrastructure is key. Without that, we would you know, get to nowhere with this integration that we want to do. And therefore, we'll sit down and continue to complain 
unemployment, the economy is not good. Meanwhile, we are sitting on the resources. Okay. So, um, the implementation of the integrated aluminium uh, industry. So, we're talking of the strategic uh, master plan. And one thing we need, so supporting infrastructure projects such as uh, the first one <coughs> excuse me, listed here, the Western Rail Line. You know, we need that to facilitate the uh, transportation system. And then the expansion of the Takra Report to facilitate the bauxite or an alumina, you know, export. Now, when we look at the, uh, the rail line facilitation, I must say that uh, the government is making a lot of effort to get this done. But time is of essence. Time is of essence. When you look at the western line, you know, currently we are, the, the timetable for the Western Rail Line uh, is to reach Yenahini, no, no, not even Yenahini, um, Uni Valley, uh, to reach Uni Valley 2025. So nowhere near um, Yenahini. Already what is happening is that Awasu is hauling or transporting all this bauxite by road. And we all see what that is doing to the road, you know, through the Takwa area. But the fact is that we also need revenue from that resources. So all we have to look at is the infrastructure to support this idea. You know, now, Awaso is doing around 1.2 million tons of bauxite per annum. The IAI plan is looking at increasing uh, bauxite production from that level of 1.2 million to about 5 million tons per annum for each of these projects. So we're looking at Awaso increasing to 5 million. We're looking at Yenehini area. The Yenehini area has three blocks three blocks, and each block, we're looking at five million tons from each of them. So you can uh, imagine that this, you know, talking of almost 20 million tons of production, comparing to the 1.2 million that we are doing currently. And for us to move that quantum, what will happen to our roads? Clearly, we need the rail line to be able to do this. Okay. Now, the other infrastructure is the ga gas pipeline through Inahini to Kumasi uh, for the provision of adequate power for the IAI. So, I mean, clearly, <coughs> excuse me, when we're talking of a uh, refinery, it's all about power. We need huge power for the refinery. And therefore, the gas pipeline only solves part of the problem. And when we say we need power, we're talking of cheap power. I mean, so we need to look at that. We, we need all of the, all this infrastructure for us to be able to move this industry to put Ghana where Ghana must be. Next. So looking at uh, a bit of details on the Western Rail Line. So the, um, what we see here is just um, the location, distance, funding, and contractor. So this is what the government has done so far. We have the Takradi to Manso, 37 kilometers, funded by the government of Ghana the contractor Amandi, and that part is completed. So kudos to government. We have Manso to Huni Valley. 
that is the next in line which would facilitate the mining of bauxite from the Inahini area, at least, so that it will be partly road and partly uh, rail transport. That is uh, 77 kilometers funding by the Deutsche Bank. Amandi is a contractor, and that is in progress. And this, we are told that it may be completed in 2025. But I know that, you know, we all need employment now. So I think that um, it's good we have our uh, regional minister here. We need something speedily as far as this uh, rail line is concerned. Okay, then we have the Huni Valley to Inahini area. As for that part, 212 kilometers funding we can't even talk about funding now okay we actually have a, a, a contractor at the moment and they're now doing feasibility studies on that so we need really to push these areas so fast and that would help us accelerate the issues of then implementing the IAI, you know, very successfully. Without this, the IAI will be very difficult, you know, to implement. Let's look at it. So this is just showing schematics of um, the, the Western Rail Line. And so a bit of layout to show the areas from Takrade Port, uh, Takrade Kojokrum, Manso, so that is a portion that has been completed as we speak now. And that is this portion here is now in progress. That is uh, from Manso through to Huni Valley is now in progress. And then from Huni Valley to Dunkwa, branching to Awaso and Yenahini, that is now we're looking at feasibility study for that. But that is very critical for the integrated aluminum industry. Now, let's move on. Okay. Now let me uh, shift a bit onto mining. Now it so happened that almost all the bauxite deposits that we have in Ghana are located in forest reserves. Now, so what does it mean? Um, once they are located in forest reserves, now it means that we need to do something uh, special if we want to mine this. And the, that of Awaso is located in the Afao Hills Forest Reserve. You know, in Pasaso is located in the Town of Fame Forest Reserve. And the Kibi one, <coughs> excuse me, is located in the Tiwa Forest Reserve. Let's move to the next one. Okay. So, by uh, the locations of the um, the bauxite deposits, now it means that to mine this bauxite deposits, you know, um, in an environmentally friendly manner we then need to look at the mining method uh, for this. So there is just one of them that I would like to show uh, in this uh, presentation. Now we need to look at a method that will protect the fauna and then the uh, flora in the forest. Okay, and so we would do this by adopting what best practices of mining and environmental protection, you know, which will include reclamation and revegetation. Uh, the bossa resource in Ghana can then be mined without destroying our forest reserve. So we realize that the conventional mining in Ghana that we know of is when you have competent ground all that you need to do is to drill and blast. 
now we have what we call uh, this equipment that we call surface miner. So the surface miner is an equipment that we are looking at to use for the mining of bauxite, you know, m m uh, moving forward. And that is environmentally friendly so that you can protect the fauna and the flora. The surface miner looks like this, and it cuts the ground. So you don't need any drill and blast. It just cuts the material and lifts it so that you can just use um, a front end loader to load your material to wherever you want to take it to. And so for uh, our project, Rockshire, this is one way we are looking at to make sure that the bauxite that will be mining you know, will be done in an environmentally friendly manner. Okay. Let's move to the next slide. Okay. So now we have talked of benefits, 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 and I want to go into a bit of analysis uh, in the financial area. So we have uh, looked at the resources that we have in Ghana. Now, when I take out the Ejuanima um, resource, we have not got much of it. So that is even not part of a JADES mandate at the moment. So focusing on what is JADES mandate now, Awaso, Yunehini, and Kibi, it means that we have about 2 billion, 2 billion tons, or 2,112 million tons of bauxite resource. Now, using this figure, and assuming that 80% of this uh, can be converted into reserves. Now, using the bauxite price that we saw, $45.93 per ton. Now, if we are just exporting the bauxite raw, it means that we would be realizing, or that has a value, the resource then would have a value of $77.6 billion. $77.6 billion. Now, when you add value to this, so at a conversion of two to one factor from bauxite to alumina, uh, the estimated alumina production you know, from this would then be 844.8 uh, million tons of alumina. And at that price of alumina, then we are talking of, um, by adding that value, we are talking of this resource value now appreciating to that value, 283.9 billion. So value addition, by building a refinery and refining that, we are now adding value to that team. And then let's look at um, the aluminum part. So with a further value addition to produce al aluminum, also at a conversion factor of two to one, the estimated aluminum production is 422.4 million tons. And uh, at this, at the aluminum price of 2,159 US dollars per ton, the bauxite resource you know, has a value of uh, 912 billion. So we're talking of 0 0.9 trillion is what we are talking of. That same resource, this is what we can realize. If we focus on our infrastructure, add value to do the refinery and do the smelter, when we do this, that same resource, we would now realize so much money. And no one should tell us that this should be f the focus of government. 
And I know that that is why JADEC was formed. And therefore, the IAI must be vigorously you know, pursued. And this is what we would realize for the nation Ghana. So for the IAI to be successful, there's a need, therefore, to focus on these things, the port facilities and the planned railway infrastructure development so that the bauxite mines and the alumina refineries can easily, I mean, can be easily assessed. Now here, what we are, uh, you know, talking about here, I mean, it's important that uh, we are able to easily assess this. You notice that the numbers that are presented I have not gone into also the cost of production. You know, I've left that out for another, you know, time, you know, opportunity of presentation. But that will also tell us that, so where we put in infrastructure, then we need to look at the infrastructure, engineer the infrastructure in such a way that the cost of those infrastructure, you know, would be affordable. And once they are affordable, then we can maximize profit, you know. So all the monies we see in is revenue. We haven't looked at the cost part yet, and I need to draw our attention to that. Okay. okay. So having gone this far, I think I can now uh, conclude uh, this way. So it is clear, the numbers we've seen, all the resource numbers we have there shows that Ghana <laughs> has um, bauxite resources of commercial quantities. We've seen the aluminum mosaic grade, we've seen the silica level, so we know we have the bauxite resources of commercial quantities. Now the IAI vision of the government of Ghana is laudable and beneficial. We have seen what it will do when we add value, what it will do to uh, employment levels, revenue levels, and all of that. We've seen that it will help the nation Ghana. Now, by doing uh, this, the interest of the GOG you know, would be protected better. Now here, what um, I am referring to is that when you look at the IAI, you know, concept itself, GIADEC is involved in the whole uh, uh, project. So, <clears throat> Rockshire, yes, we have a concession, but for that concession, Rockshire owns 70%, you know, of the concession. GIADEC and Ghana government, you know, has 30% of it. So we going into a joint venture, you know, to implement this um, IAI. In other words, the industry that we would, you know, put together here will be by a joint venture between um, Rockshire or let's say the strategic investor and uh, GIADEC as well as Ghana government. So the government is deeply involved in this. And that is why we say that what the IAI is seeking to do will protect uh, government you know, better than just giving out concessions to strategic investors for them to go and you know, do their own thing. When government has a body that gets involved, government's uh, interest can be protected better. Um, clearly, the IAI uh, will provide more job opportunities. Now, value addition to the boss side, we've seen will generate higher and higher revenues. Now, the Takrady port facilities for export of boss side and alumina and the planned railway infrastructure are critical for the success of the IAI. And I try to stress this so much in my uh, presentation. Then, uh, finally, the port and the real charges 
need to be negotiated and made cheaper to make the IAI feasible. Because these are things that will drive the cost of production. So it's important that um, we negotiate you know, prices of this so that um, it is affordable for the project uh, uh, production cost to be manageable and then we can maximize profit. So let's see what I have on my last slide. So what I'm saying to uh, you all finally is long live government of Ghana, long live Rockshire, long live GRC, long live the IAI. In fact, I should have added long live Alumat. So I am adding that to the list. So thank you very much for um, listening. This is just a maiden lecture just to whet your appetite. I must say that this subject is involving. There are many angles of this subject and we will come again to, to, to even pick all the sectors and go through it in details. So thanks for listening and make a date will come again. Uh, thank you very much. In fact, before I hand over the mic, let me also state that, you know, Roxio, I didn't just come to stand here. Um, what Roxio uh, is doing to support uh, Alumat is uh, I brought a check of uh, 30,000 <laughs> Ghana cities uh, to support Alumat. And personally, I am looking forward for other programs of the, of the university, and I would also make my personal commitment that I would discuss with the vice chancellor before I make it public at another time. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Godfred Adu AEC. Please, let's give it up to him. Um, he's really enlightened us uh, so much. And he's from Rockshaw International. We thank Rockshaw so much. Rockshaw International is a Ghanaian-owned mining services company with over 14 years experience 100 percent ghanian owned rockshaw international okay the president wants to take the check on behalf of alumat <laughs> thank you very much rockshaw We thank Rockshaw so much, so, so much. Well, uh, Mr. E.C. has really enlightened us. See, he started with the history of bauxite, then the benefits, then what the IAI is doing to make sure that um, uh, the country will get some free range and we all see the good things that we have in this country. Because seriously, you know, our president once said that yet is And now Mr. EC has made us know that yet is So, But the question is, when are we going to enjoy it? Mr. EC, when is Rockshaw going to mine in a Hini? Very soon. Very, very soon. Well, thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, honestly, I would like Prof. Mekujima to come and give us some remarks on the topic as he's also worked on it he can let us know when they are mining because we want to enjoy minister want Ghanaians to enjoy before december 2024 so prof when are you started the bauxite mining 
I think Mr. Ado AEC has said it all. I can only tell you that for the first time in Ghana, we plan to mine, pump back every waste and fill up completely <laughs> and revegetate. So we are talking of total reclamation. And the plans are there. We will reveal, as he said, from time to time. Uh, we want to demonstrate that Ghanaians have the ability to do what is correct at one time. We are hoping that, as he said, if we can get the Western Rail Line in place by 2025, as government has promised, we will be there to give you bauxite. Thank you. Thank you very much, Prof. Shall we please stand for the university anthem? Page 30 of the brochure. The words were written by Prof. Rekujuba. take some brief remarks from our sponsors. Do we have someone representing Angogo Dashanti Driapre Mine? Well, then we'll call on the CEO of Quantum LC for some brief remarks as we appreciate their support for Alumat. So, Mr. Titus Glover, Thank you very much. Uh, 
Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. All protocols on set. Uh, my proud uh, student of, we call it School of Mines at that time. Yes, and, uh, I'm a T92 student. That means I entered the school in 1992. And uh, I did mining engineering degree. Uh, slowly, we've managed to form a mining contracting company to provide service to the mine. And the main aim, <laughs> mostly, is to give back to the school. So we are also going to support more, donate more, and even try to do something special for the school very soon. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. You know, you heard Mr. E.C. saying the president is um, his mate. And I think that they are T85, right? T83. <laughs> I am T98. <laughs> Prof. Akubu. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, let's invite our special guest of honor, Honorable Governor uh, Otre Dakumesa. The Western Regional Minister and MP for Takradi. Thank you very much. When OKT invites me these days, I dare not show up. Good evening. Professor Chairman, Richard Amankwa, Vice Chancellor of UMAT. Professor Emeritus Mirikujuma, whose son is Dr. Mirikujuma of Impoho Medical Dietary. <laughs> <laughs> My senior brother, I think he's left. I saw him here, Professor From. He's left there. Okay. In fact, Professor From took me to science at Infanspim. So, Prof, when you when I talk science more, you understand where my science is coming from. Mr. Ndede, who is the president of Alumat and your executives. My own brother, Titus Glover. For your information, Titus is a tardy boy. He's only in Accra to do business, but he's a pure tardy boy. Born, bred, educated, Chill small. Made in Western Region. Okay, that's what they wanted. That's correct. Students, faculty, invited guests, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. I'm honored to be part of this 11th annual Alumat Lecture of this university. The University of Mines and Technology, one of the biggest institutions that we have in the Western region. I'd like to thank the executives of the Alumat for inviting me here to be part of this great occasion. For me, and as your minister, I want to welcome all of you, both far and near, to this great campus of ours. In fact, any time the story of UMAT Railway School is talked about. I feel very proud to have been a part of that story. And, and what people usually leave out is that Professor Mikujuma is one of the people that we spoke to to put it together. And then it happened in the time of Professor Amankwa. In fact, this university has a very long history. I remember in 2004, I was the campaign manager for Honorable Jogati, and we had come to Keten to do a big campaign. So when I got to the stage, before I introduced him, I said, we'll build a university in Keten. And this was a big story all over the country. So when Honorable got the opportunity to be the railway minister, we needed to fulfill our promise. And I'm happy, Professor Mankwa and his team raised up their heads to make sure this became a reality. 
So, Prof, that's why your school rules are being done. And they are done under my office, the urban rules. And just more is the contractor. That is why your school block, if requested, will work on it and make sure you also get it. In fact, one person that I believe that your school need to recognize is my former predecessor, Honorable Boyinedu. You know, he had worked on UMAT when he was the minister for the Western region. And now that is in Koko, and railway will carry Koko to the harbor. Maybe we should speak to him. He can also come and help us build something on the University of... Ladies and gentlemen, I am particularly happy we are here to discuss the theme of great importance to the development of our country. Overview of Ghana's integrated aluminum industry. The aluminum industry sector holds the potential to generate significant revenues and job opportunities for Ghana. It could contribute to economic diversification and reduce the country's reliance on traditional exports like cocoa and gold. In fact, even before the integrated aluminum story is fully told, at least we have the Sino Hydro project to show for it. And when I talk about the Sino Hydro project, when you get into Takrade and you see the interchange, it has been built on the back of a successful integrated aluminum industry. When you go to Prisia and you see the town roofs, Prisia Himai town roofs, when you go to Inehini, which is my grandfather's hometown town roofs, and you go to Cape Coast and you see the town roofs, and you go to the northern region and you see the interchange. It has already been built on the back of an expecting successful integrated aluminum industry. So at least, even before this happens, all the figures we've been told happens, we are already benefiting from what the aluminum and the alumina we are waiting for to be produced by Rockshaw, at least the first strategic <laughs> partner. We all know Ghana has been making efforts to develop its integrated aluminum industry. The country is endowed with significant bauxite deposits, a key raw material for aluminum production, and has been taking steps to leverage the resources for economic development. In line with the government vision to build an integrated aluminum industry that encompasses the entire value chain, from bauxite mining, alumina refining to aluminum smelting and downstream processing in the country. It's better the Ghana Integrated Aluminum Development Corporation, GIADEC, which was established through the Ghana Integrated Aluminum Development Act of 2018 Act 976 to promote and develop an integral aluminum industry in Ghana. Like we've been told, GIADEC hosts and manages all of government of Ghana's current and future interests and investments in the integrated aluminum industry, which includes the entire value chain in the production of aluminum. GIADEC currently holds government of Ghana 100% in Volta Aluminium Company and 20% minority stake in Ghana Bauxite Company Limited, respectively. But like we know currently, Ghana Bauxite is now being held by Ghanaian companies. One of the most significant advantages of an integrated aluminum industry is its contributing to sustainability and environmental conservation. Aluminum is infinitely recyclable. So when we produce aluminum, whichever way, we can always recycle and recycle. I think when the organogram was put out there, we sh they showed us uh, how we can recycle it back some of the aluminum. And recycling it requires only a fraction of the energy needed for primary production. An integrated industry encourages efficient recycling practices, reducing the environmental footprint of aluminum production. Additionally, aluminum lightweight properties contribute to fuel efficiency and emission reduction in transportation, which is crucial for combating climate change. You are also aware that one of our biggest difficulties we have in this country 
is that virtually all our mineral resources are under our forest reserves. So there's always a big challenge in how to mine and mine properly. It is one of the reasons why you can see Galamsey all over our forest reserve. It's because those who kept the forest reserve for us, I believe that they wanted to come back again to colonize us. And the only way they could locate the mineral resources was the forest. <laughs> so Guineans have also now located it. So if you are not careful, almost every day, somebody is trying to make an attempt to get into a forest reserve in our country. And that's our biggest challenge. So the problem is, do we mine all now and replant so that nobody will be tempted to go back into those areas because we know that the gold has already been taken away from the place? Or we'll keep it and not mine and then we'll have Galamse always at our neck. I believe that this is one of the challenges that I believe that this discussion should engender us to find the thin line between production or no production in our forest reserve. So student, this one is your thesis paper. You have to go and give us a proper uh, a solution uh, to this problem. It is for this reason that value addition to our bauxite processing in Ghana is key in growing our GDP instead of our current export of raw bauxite out of the country. So if you are mining to degrade the environment, then it will be fit and proper that will mine, refine, and smelter so that we can get the full value of the mineral we have taken so that at least we can get enough of it to go back and reclaim and replant. Because if you're only doing for just the box size site, it gives you only uh, $31 in Ghana terms per ton. You'll not be having enough to do the reclamation and naturally going into the forest to mine will become a difficulty in going back to the original state of the land that we can use in developing those lands that we might have destroyed. An integrated aluminum industry promotes research and development, fostering innovation in material science and technology. This innovation extends beyond aluminum itself, as it often leads to advancement in related fields such as metallurgy, engineering, and energy efficiency. For instance, research in aluminum production has led to more energy efficient smelting processes and the development of stronger and lighter alloys. Ever since JADEC was announced, we've had a lot of proposals even from the US and Canada on how to process these minerals more efficient. And we've sent some to government to uh, look at some of these things in Accra. For instance, research in aluminum production led to more efficient smelting processes and the development of stronger and lighter alloys. And you know the alloys are the ones that are used for airplanes and cars and the rest. So the more we are interested in investing in aluminum production, alumina production, bauxite production, then we are also giving ourselves the opportunity to do more things in this country in creating more jobs and science. According to experts, aluminum use in automobiles will continue to grow as public demand for a greener environment and greater fuel efficiency forces policymakers to boost fuel economy standards and cut carbon dioxide emissions. Aluminum has benefited from 30 years of uninterrupted growth in terms of aluminum content in motor vehicles with an average of nearly 100 and 81 kilograms per vehicle today. As a country, we could not have been more spot on in considering our oil and gas fine as a key to powering an integrated aluminum industry that can create thousands of jobs and increase government revenues for national development. And if you look at the way aluminum is going to actually impact on our GDP, Government is also doing a lot of investment. I mean, if you take even the railway line, if it had not been the recent IMF arrangement, 
you should have been in, in Suta by now. Because our strategy was to use the Suta line to pay for the rest of the project. Because if Insuta could do three times a day, we could generate a minimum of about $80 million a year. So the project which is costing us about uh, um, $500 million, we could start paying for it and we could get more money to do in the other side of the project. That was our plan. But as I speak, they've entered Insuta. And as I speak, they've also opened another front at um, Winnie Valley. So I believe that very soon we'll be able to get out of uh, Amantin going towards uh, Winnie Valley. The other one that we've also not gotten the money for, you know this normal crisis. But definitely, as far as we have a company on the feasibility, very soon we'll raise the money for the project from Kumasi to join uh, Winnie Valley. And then we also get to um, Offen, uh, Offenso, and then we'll go to Awaso. So be assured, that government is making whatever it has to do to invest in the railway line. So, Rockshaw, maybe today that we are talking about um, bauxite, you should start also building your plant so that by the time you build it in three years, we would have also gotten to the corn offense. And then we'll get you to our so and then you can bring your bauxite. And if you are lucky, we'll do the other 64 to my grandfather's hometown in Eini and also go and bring those ones also on board to what we have in our so. so without making any fun or fuss i believe that the growth of our bauxite industry is key to the growth of all the communities that this mining will also take place we strongly believe that we cannot have a mining operation that leaves behind it mining towns. It is for this reason that we call on the mining companies with these special responsibilities to look at developing the mining towns as they also develop their mines. That's the only way we can have coexistence. That's the only way the development will be meaningful to get the Ghanaian people. And that's the only way Ghanaians will feel that mining is good. Mining is good and that we stop demonizing mining in the country. Just the only way, if you can, mining companies can handhold mining communities to grow along with them. Grow along with them. So that they see their towns as Johannesburg and Calgary and Houston, and not as Takwa, Bogoso, or Konongo. If you are able to change that narrative, then naturally, I believe that everybody will understand that mining is good for this country. It is on this note that I urge participants at this lecture to bring their expertise to bear and come out with policy options and plans that will help build a robust functioning and a vibrant downstream aluminum industry that contributes meaningfully to our national economy. As we continue to face environmental challenges and strive for a more sustainable future, the aluminum industry will play an increasingly vital role. Let us recognize the significance of this industry and work together to assure its continued growth and development for the benefit of our society. In fact, at a price difference of 45 to 2150, clearly the aluminum business is a good business. I therefore call on Ghanaians to invest in the aluminum industry as individuals or as groups in investment clubs owning the productive assets of this nation. And definitely, if this industry is, um, if this industry is so big or can grow so big and then Ghanaians own this productive asset, the profit will definitely stay in this country. If the profits stay in this country, the country will be better than we have seen with the mining industry in general. Today, I was asking myself aloud, if you look at the numbers in Guinea of how much they export, if you look at the numbers in Jamaica, how much they are processing, the question I ask myself is, why are they still poor? 
they are still poor because they don't own the productive assets of this mineral exploration and exploitation. So if Ghana has to make meaningful benefits from this industry, we should be prepared to invest our own money in the projects that Rockshow and other uh, licenses are doing in this country. And when they do so, this country will be greater and strongest. Long live Western region. Long live Alomat. Thank you very much, and may God bless us. Honorable, thank you very, very, very much. So we are on course. But today you've given the members of Alumat the encouragement and zeal because we believe that mining is joy. And you've made everybody aware that mining too is good. So it means that we are in the right profession because we are always happy in a joyous mood to work as mining professionals. So if the regional minister has acknowledged that our profession is good, then we are on track. Let me acknowledge again the, our sponsors, um, Quantum LC, the leaders in sales and uh, mining um, services, as well as consultancy services. We are very grateful, Mr. Titus Glover. Impa Marine, the House of Oil and Gas, PPEs and MROs, and Rockshaw International. We thank you so much. As well as our headline sponsors, Angu Gold, Ashanti, Ediaprim, mine. We are so grateful. Let's now call on the president of Alumat for a note of appreciation, Dr. Indede. Thank you. Prof Chair, all protocols observed. Before I bring my appreciation, Prof Chair, permit me. I've seen a lot of uh, pull-ups down here, but this one didn't talk. And give me the opportunity that this will talk. This is an endowment fund to support the university. It was launched some several years back. We are not yet there. In fact, we were talking about a three million endowment, Ghana City endowment fund. At that time, it was a one million US dollar endowment fund. So, so when you see this figure and you're donating, have that in mind. I must say that most alumni have contributed, but a lot more need to respond. And at this forum, I'm appealing to all alumni who had not responded, and also friends, and especially companies that are headed by alumni. Uh, we appreciate uh, Quantum for supporting this, and uh, a promise has come in kind that he's going to do something for university. I appeal to all of us over here that uh, you look at this endowment fund. Thank you. Thank you, Prof. Chair, for the opportunity to sell the endowment fund. We thank the almighty God for the day and then the strength that he has given us. Prof. Chair, we thank you for the knowledge, the wisdom, the tact to steer this function to a successful end. Our regional minister, I'm very much aware that you had to leave some paperwork in the office and rush here. And so tonight, your dinner will be, your, will be in your office. 
Uh, I know it very well. I will thank you very much for giving us your time. Our engineer, Dr. Michael Agnente, understand he had to leave a bit earlier. The MD of Railway Development, who represented the minister, we are very grateful, and we believe that the message will get to Dr. Michael Agnente and obviously to the minister. Our proud sponsors, Anglo Good Ashanti, Russia International. When I was coming for the check of Russia International, it wasn't that I liked the money. I don't normally handle the money, it's the treasure. But I wanted Russia to come into the post uh, for the pictures. So those who took the pictures, make sure that. <laughs> <laughs> because we didn't see the pull up of Russia over here. And it is a picture that will acknowledge it. So it was for a purpose. Thank you, Rosho. Quantum, once again, we thank you. You've shown that you are a, a, a very supportive alumna, alumnus, sorry. And uh, you've supported us in so many ways, and we are very grateful. Impa Marine, we are very grateful. And all other sponsors. Our previous and current VCs, we thank you for spending time with us and guiding us. Faculty members and students, we are very grateful. We cannot just gloss over what our organizers have done. That's a big job. Uh, the organizing committee has done a good job. Their names have been listed boldly. Uh, on page 31 of the brochure. We are very grateful. Proud alumni, present, and those who are listening through other media, we are very grateful. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you all for coming. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Steven Indede, Alumat President. I will now take the chairman's closing remarks. I know that event organizers will tell us that the closing remarks should have come before the note of appreciation. But this is Prof's institution, so Prof Chair, your closing remarks. <laughs> Thank you very much, Honorable Okiti. Um, I think we have had a very wonderful time learning about the bauxite industry of Ghana. Um, Mr. Isi has delivered a very deep um, lecture. And whilst I was sitting down, I was telling myself that if he had been a professor, this would have been a very good inaugural lecture. And um, it also, fosters my personal um, drive that we need to, at a point in Ghana, have professors of practice. People who have worked in industry, who have gained a lot of experience, who can be appointed as professors in the university. Not because they have PhDs or they have papers, but because they have practice experience. I hope that um, I'm going to table this at BCG meeting for discussion because in the minerals industry we have big people here who can actually walk into the classroom and start teaching without um, much preparation. He talked about the fact that the bauxite in Ghana is of a high quality and it is good. He talked about the fact that a ton of bauxite is about 45 dollars per ton, but aluminum is about 2,100 plus. And if we are able to add value, Ghana can raise about $912 billion from our bauxite reserves. He also mentioned that there is a need 
for us to build infrastructure to support the whole project. He didn't forget to add that all these reserves are in forests. And that means that the mining engineers here, the environmentalists here, we all have to team up and see how best we can mine from our forest and reclaim it and let the forest continue with their journey. I believe that we have all learned something. And as we live here, let us all keep talking and engaging so that together we can synergize to move this aluminum industry forward. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Prof. Chair. We also acknowledge the presence of our Army um, officers here. We've seen you. Thank you so much. And we thank everybody. We are very grateful. We'll meet next year. Prof, next year, will it be here or Takwa? <laughs> well, we'll meet um, next year, the second Friday of October uh, next year. And we know we'll have a fantastic speaker as well as a great topic. Prof, you owe us a lecture. Prof Kujima. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we'll call on very Reverend Isaac Kofi, right? Very Reverend Isaac Kofi for the closing prayer. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you for anointing this great institution with the mission of training students fly above the limit of the sky who will go out there with knowledge and demonstrate the priceless character of truth and excellence for which we have seen in Alumat performance in everywhere they go. We thank you for bringing this program to a successful end and we ask the Lord even as we are living here you will grant us traveling message to wherever we came from. We are praying for our sponsors especially Rockshaw and Quantum, we are asking that Lord you grant them and endow them with all the resources that they need to be able to function and do what is needs to be able to come back and help this institution. We are also praying that Father, whatever needs to be done for this country to grow and progress in finance and everything so that the youth of this great country would have what to do. We are praying that you help us to go through this. We pray that even as we are living here, if not left your presence, continue to be with us and help every individual in this room so that our mission and vision in life would be achieved. We thank you and we bless you in the name of God the Father, Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you very much. Um, our special invited guests and members of Alumat um, will have some discussions in the other room. And we entreat everybody to stay for some small refreshment. Pictures will also be taken outside. Thank you very much, and we'll meet um, next time.